43 million votes have been submitted in the 2024 election thus far, and the people who have been studying the polls are at a loss for words on what is actually taking place. You guys have got to check this out. Representing a quarter of the total votes in the 2020 cycle, 40 million ballots have been cast all around the nation. Republicans are overperforming expectations, as registered Republicans vote early or return mail-in ballots at an unusually high rate, you have most likely heard. Based on these figures, let us explore the data and create an electoral college map for 2024 to evaluate whether Democrats have cause for worry at this point. Tracking mail-in and early in-person voting across most states is a fantastic tool available from NBC News. At the time of this recording, registered Republicans cast 40% of the ballots, registered Democrats cast 42%, and independents or third-party voters cast 18%. Early on, Democrats clearly have a small edge. Historically, they prefer mail-in and early in-person voting. Republicans often show up more on election day itself. Having said that, the real surprise is how small the gap is. Hence, instead of basing our estimates on these figures at face value, we will probe demographic trends, polling data, and prediction markets to better understand possible outcomes. Let us start now. First, NBC News does not have early voting data for the four states, Missouri, Kentucky, Mississippi, and Alabama, which are already clearly marked as solid Republicans on this map since the states have not reported any results. Each of these states, however, voted for Donald Trump by at least 15 points in 2020. Once all the votes are tallied, there is no reason to doubt they will support him by a great margin. I'll skip a thorough examination of every safe state for every candidate to keep things moving. Early vote results point to Republicans dominating in the following states as expected for former President Trump. Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, and Alaska. Along with the first and third districts, Kansas and Oklahoma, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, statewide, are found over the Great Plains. While in Appalachia, West Virginia, and Indiana round out the list, in the South Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee, and South Carolina are displaying their typically strong Republican support. Not voting Democratic since, at least 2008, each of these states backed Trump by notable margins in 2020. Early voting figures already show Republicans are already leaping out to major advantages in every single one of these states, leading by margins of roughly 15 to 40 points. Their combined count as 125 electoral votes. Remember, the magic number required to guard the White House is 270. Regarding Kamala Harris, Democrats also hold strong early leads in several deep blue states. We have Washington, Oregon, California, and Hawaii down the Pacific coast. Illinois is the only solidly blue non-coastal state eastward. The rest of these Democratic strongholds are in the Northeast, New York, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. Joe Biden carried all these states by at least 15 points in 2020, and none have voted Republicans since 1988, eight cycles ago. And once more, Democrats are expectedly leading here by rather very large margins in the early vote. With 180... 99% of the time, when a state is solid Democrat or solid Republican, that ain't changing. But something is different in this election. I could feel it in the air. I'm from New York. I could feel the energy and the atmosphere. So although, statistically speaking, New York is more likely to go Democrat, it would not be as solid as many people would think. People who consider themselves lifelong Democrats are no longer thinking the same way and are turning towards Donald Trump and the Republican Party. But I rarely see the opposite happening when someone was a Republican and they turned to the Democratic Party. So me personally, I'm not entirely ruling out Donald Trump winning New York. I think it's in the Votes, air. They together propel Kamala Harris ahead of Trump now. That leaves 17 more competitive states to now examine more closely. First, let's start with Nevada, where the early vote totals have attracted more interest than any other state this cycle. Usually at this point, we would be talking about the Democratic firewall here and whether Republicans could close the election day divide. With almost 600,000 ballots already cast, almost half the total expected vote, Republicans are currently outnumbering Democrats by six percentage points. Arguably, this early campaign data point for Kamala Harris raises serious concerns. With 1.3 million votes, Nevada's last early vote total in 2020 favored Democrats by four points, 
So enabling Biden to hold Nevada in the Democratic column by 2.4 percent, Nevada has, nevertheless, shown a slow Republican turn in line with national trends. Clinton gained Nevada by the same 2.4 percent margin in 2016, although with a smaller national popular vote margin. Republicans also seized on this trend by turning the governor's office upside down in 2022. Based on 43 polls in the decision desk HQ polling average, current polling shows Trump trailing Harris by 0.9 percent. Democrats just have to start chipping away at this Republican early vote advantage in the next week in a race as close as this. Else we might see Trump overperforming not only in Nevada, but possibly in other battlegrounds as well. Right now, Nevada falls in the tilt Republican column. Trump is the minor favorite here. Turning now to Arizona, still another fiercely competitive race in the Southwest. With Biden carrying it by just 0.3%, Arizona ranked second closest state by margin in 2020. The fast expansion and diversification of Maricopa County, which includes the Phoenix metro area, helps to explain his success. High turnout among Hispanic and college-educated voters ever so gently turned the county and hence the state at large into the Democratic column. Now, early vote numbers show Republicans are on track for a strong showing here again, leading Democrats by six points among the 1.2 million mail-in and early in-person votes cast, currently at 42% Republican to 36% Democrat. Out of the 2.8 million early ballots returned, Republicans led Democrats by only three points, 38% to 35%. Comparing this to the 2020 election, we find Republicans overperforming that number by three points. Given Biden's meager 0.3% margin of victory in 2020, any Democratic slippage in Arizona could prove lethal for the party. Based on 59 polls, Trump currently leads Harris by 1.9%, so supporting this trend as well. Especially Arizona has been the one central battleground state where Trump has regularly polled even with or ahead of Harris drop from the ballot. We will thus classify Arizona as a tilt Republican, alongside Nevada. Trump is preferred to carry both states, barring significant increase in Democratic early voter turnout. Then come Colorado and New Mexico. While he only carried New Mexico by 11%, thus in terms of the early vote here so far, Democrats outnumber Republicans by 12 points in New Mexico right now. 2020 notably marked the first time in over 50 years that Colorado voted to the left of New Mexico as it trended hard to the left to favor Joe Biden by almost 14 points. Note here that historically Colorado's independence, which explains the plurality of votes cast thus far, is quite left-leaning. Once more, Biden prevailed by 13.5 percent. Back in 2020, the early vote indicated Democrats also only had a two-point advantage over Republicans, with 40 percent of those ballots returned by independents. Returning to our electoral map, now I am going to mark both states in the safe blue column, since Democrats are expected to match their 2020 margins. Completing the Southwest with Texas, the second biggest electoral prize on the map, valued 40 votes. Texas has already seen more than any other state with just the first few days of early voting. Over 4 million ballots cast. With 54% to 36% over Democrats, Republicans presently lead 18 points in the early vote. Does anybody remember back in 2020, the Democrats and CNN, MSNBC, they were hyping up Donald Trump losing Texas. There was a lot of momentum behind that narrative and Donald Trump won the state within like an hour, I think they called it. The reason that they were saying it's so tight is because there was a mass exodus of people from California moving to Texas because of the disastrous policies in California. It was not sustainable, so then they moved to Texas. So that's what CNN was preaching, but it just didn't make sense. If you don't like the policies in California that are Democratic, why would you move to Texas and vote Democrat? It was a logic fail. But the thing that caused me worry about this election is that Texas is right on the border. And as we know, there were millions of undocumented people coming into this country since 2020. So that's the only cause for concern I have about Texas. I don't know how strict they are about voting ID laws down there. The early and absentee vote leaned Republican by 17 points in 2020 when Trump won Texas by 5.6 percent, the narrowest Republican margin in Texas this century. Given Republicans are up about a point here, the early 2024 figures we are seeing here seem to fairly closely reflect four years ago. Based on 18 polls, Trump likewise leads by 6.6 percent over Harris in the poll average, relative to the 2020 margin, a one-point overperformance as well. 
Furthermore, given Hispanic voters' ongoing Republican trend, it is more likely that Democrats reach their ceiling in Texas in 2020 and might find it difficult to raise on that performance this cycle. These elements will thus help us to classify Texas as most likely Republican. Now, Divine, moving to the southeast here in Florida, another state where the first few days of early voting have yielded a sizable total of almost 4 million ballots returned. Leading here also by a nine-point margin, Republicans account for 44% of the votes cast thus far, relative to Democrats' 35%. For Kamala Harris, this represents still another alarming statistic. Democrats led the final early vote tally, totaling more than 9 million by one point, as back in 2020 when Trump carried Florida by 3.5 points. Over the past few years, the Florida Democratic Party has had just a terrible time here. Since 2020, Republicans have registered far more voters. Over the past few cycles, the state has followed trend as hard to the right as any other state. Recall back in 2022, Republicans witnessed a localized red wave here as Florida re-elected Senator Marco Rubio and Governor Ron DeSantis plied margins of more than 15 percentage points apiece. The poll also indicates Trump might win Florida by the biggest margin for a presidential candidate in decades in 2024. Reversing direction on our map, Florida falls into the probably Republican category alongside Texas. Georgia comes next, the closest state in 2020 where Joe Biden turned the peach state blue for the first time in 30 years, winning by a barely perceptible 0.2%. Like Arizona, Biden's triumph could be ascribed to the fast expansion and diversification of Atlanta, the state's largest population center, where record black voter turnout tipped the state ever so slightly in Biden's direction. The possibility for radical racial depolarization, black and Hispanic voters leaning toward Trump, is one of the narratives of this election cycle. Polling crosstabs between October 16th and 31st shows that, compared to 2020, Trump is up by over 20 points on average among black voters, a change that might especially harm Democratic prospects in Georgia. The general numbers also show this trend since the latest polling average shows Trump slightly favored, which leads Harris by 1.3%, depending on 55 polls in the decision desk HQ average. Regarding early voting, Georgia is once more seeing a record number of ballots cast early. Early voting exceeds halfway to the overall 2020 turnout. Early or by mail, about 2.8 million ballots have been cast thus. Republicans lead by four points, 49% to 45%. Fascinatingly, given four million ballots, Republicans exceeded Democrats by eight points in early voting, indicating a rather positive trend for Democrats. Don't get me wrong, Georgia is going to be one of the tightest states come this next election, but as long as they don't stop counting the votes because of a water pipe burst, I think Trump is going to be okay. So unless some random mishap like that happens, they stop counting votes and then a bunch of votes come in at 4.30 in the morning, I think Trump will have it because he spent a lot of time campaigning down there. So I think that will pay off for them. Where they can find them at this point, even if Democratic numbers are. Most likely still distorted due to the overrepresentation of mail in ballots, which typically are cast first, and lean far more Democratic. While we keep an eye on these figures over the next week, Georgia will remain in the tilt Republican category on our map for now. Worth 16 electoral votes and another key battleground, Democrats must build a strong early voting lead now as rural Republican dominated areas are expected to swing hard for Trump on Election Day. Moving up the southeast coast to North Carolina. So far, though, among the 2.5 million ballots cast thus far, Democrats are once more behind trailing Republicans by two points. Court decisions on RFK status on the ballots have complicated early voting in North Carolina. Naturally, the aftermath of Hurricane Helene, which momentarily closed some early voting locations, has added more difficulty. Still, the 2.5 million vote sample size offers insightful analysis. Among almost 4.5 million ballots, Democrats erected a firewall of five points over Republicans headed into Election Day in 2020. Trump eventually won the state by more than a point. Again, in a state where high turnout is necessary to remain competitive, Democrats are now performing below their 2020 figures. Based on average of 59 polls, Trump leads Harris by 1.5% right now. 
Hence, North Carolina will follow other Sunbelt states in the tilt Republican category on our map. With former President Trump leading in the race to 270 electoral votes, 244 over Kamala Harris's 195, we have nine states to go now. Turning now to the Midwest, first considering Tim Walz's home state of Minnesota as Harris's running mate. Joe Biden carried Minnesota by a seven-point margin in 2020. Democrats led the early vote by 13 percent. Democrats lead Republicans by 22 points today with almost a million ballots returned. Early in-person ballots have replaced the first waves of mail-in votes, thus this lead has somewhat closed over the past few days. Still, on our electoral map, Minnesota will fit rather nicely in the likely category for Harris and Walls. Turning now to Iowa and Ohio, these two states rank among the fastest right-trending ones in the nation. Both supported Barack Obama in 2008 and once more in 2012, before Donald Trump won them by at least eight points in both 2016 and 2020. With 300,000 ballots returned, Democrats have a four-point advantage over Republicans in Iowa as of right now. Compared to 2020, when Democrats led early voting by 12 points before Election Day changed the state to an eight-point win for Trump, this is yet another notable underperformance for them. Actually, Republicans are underperforming somewhat over in Ohio. They lead Democrats among the 2.3 million ballots returned thus far. But this is a one-point decline from the 10-point early vote lead Republicans had in 2020 among the 3.3 million early ballots cast. Although Republicans still have time to expand on this margin, there is also some evidence that Democratic losses in Ohio and more general Appalachia may be slowing. Based on an average of 14 polls, Trump leads Harris by roughly six points in Ohio. Democrats observed small increases in suburban areas in the midterm elections. Especially, every one of the last seven polls reveals Trump somewhat below his eight-point margin of expectation for 2020. Thus, on our map, Ohio stays in the likely Republican category for now, while Iowa moves into the safe Republican column. Let us now concentrate on the core Upper Rust Belt trio, the Wimpa states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, which will once more be vital in this race. Since 1988, these states have voted together in every election, supporting Democrats every time until they virtually turned a Trump in 2016 by less than a point, so providing the required votes to reach 270. But in 2020, they all turned back to Biden, so guaranteeing his route to the presidency. Now once more, for the 2024 contest, winning at least one of these states determines both candidates' routes to 270 most, certainly. Kamala Harris might possibly need all three. Harris could reach 270 electoral votes with a perfect sweep of the Rust Belt states, even if Trump were to sweep the four Sun Belt battlefields, as he does here. Starting in Wisconsin, demographically and fundamentally, this trio of upper Midwest states is most Republican-leaning. In past cycles, Wisconsin has regularly voted to the right of Michigan and Pennsylvania. Its more rural population makes it particularly sensitive to Trump's power among white working-class voters. Trump notably exceeded the final polling averages here by more than 6.5 points in both 2016 and 2020. Based on 67 polls, Trump now has a meager lead of 0.4 percent over Harris in the 2024 polling average, although Biden led by over 8 points in 2020 and Clinton trailed by about 6 points. Regarding early voting, the first mail-in ballots gave Democrats a head start, but as early in-person voting has continued and over 800,000 ballots have been tallied, the advantage has closed. By 12 points, Democrats lead Republicans. This margin keeps daily shrinking. By eight points in the almost two million votes cast before Election Day in 2020, Republicans exceeded Democrats. It's just a matter of waiting to see whether Republicans can surpass Democrats in early voting and subsequently by what margin. Based on present poly market betting estimates, Trump has a 57% chance of winning Wisconsin. Thus, I if you were to show me this map right here four years ago, I would take this 10 times out of 10. Because just think about it. 
Donald Trump, for the most part, just needs to win one of these states to hit 270. Just one. And think about how hard Trump has been going at these Rust Belt states. Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. He is always there campaigning. Compare that with North Carolina as well. How could anyone from that state support Kamala Harris after the blunder that they had with Hurricane Helene? The federal government and FEMA were just so incompetent handling that hurricane. I don't know how anyone who was affected by that could sit there and in good conscience vote for more of this. Say what you will about Trump, you don't like his personality or whatnot, he would have never had a blunder like that. He would have made sure everybody was protected, rescued, and well taken care of. But something I wish would happen in this election, but I doubt it will is I want either Kamala or Tim Waltz to lose their home state. I think that would just be sweet justice, but I just don't think it's feasible. Generally been more hopeful for Harris than the public. Things are different. Having supported Biden by almost three points in 2020, Michigan is essentially the bluest of the three WIMPA states. Democrats have shown great performance in down ballot contests since then. Based on their 64 poll average, the newest polling average from Decision Desk HQ shows the two candidates in an exact tie. The lead has been constantly shifting over the past few weeks. Regarding the early vote, Democrats have a 14 point advantage, 52% to 38%. Almost 1.5 million votes have already been returned. Once more, daily narrowing of this Democratic edge is occurring. With Biden winning Michigan by 2.8%, Republicans outnumbered Democrats by two points among the 3.2 million early or mail-in ballots back in 2020. Keeping this in mind, I will thus mark Michigan as tilting Democrat for Harris here right now. If we do see these three states separate, I believe Pennsylvania will vote somewhere in between, while Wisconsin and Michigan most likely will differ. Speaking of Pennsylvania worth 19 electoral votes, this is the most important battlefield on the map. With both Harris and Trump's chances of obtaining 270 electoral votes skyrocketing to almost 90 percent should they carry Pennsylvania, Nate Silver's latest presidential forecast gives Pennsylvania a 31 percent chance of tipping the election either way. Based on 88 polls, the polling average right now shows Trump leading by 0.2 percent, more than in any other state. Since Harris became the Democratic nominee, the margin has stayed inside the usual range for a polling error. Pennsylvania is, all things considered, absolutely as purple as it gets. A real 50-50 battlefield. Early voting numbers show 1.2 million ballots returned already. Pennsylvania lacks conventional early voting. Voters must personally seek a mail-in ballot at the county clerk's office. Regarding Nebraska's second district, it is virtually entirely urban around Omaha and boasts a far more varied population with a lot of college graduates. It voted for Biden by 6.5 points, and this cycle, it probably will trend more to the left. Based on an analysis of the early vote thus far, Donald Trump is on target to win the election with 278 electoral votes to Kamala Harris's 241. Something that this guy doesn't take into account because it's impossible is that although there's a lot more early voting for Republicans and even Democrats, you have to keep in mind that doesn't mean every Republican and Democrat is voting on party lines. I happen to believe that this election, a lot of people who are registered as Democrats, the people who would have supported Robert F. Kennedy, for instance, are going to be polling for Donald Trump. So although the Democratic numbers are high in early voting, that doesn't mean that they're all going for Kamala straight down the ticket. It doesn't really matter to me how many electoral votes Donald Trump gets as long as he hits 270. I don't care if he gets 330, I don't care if he gets 271, just get above the number 270 and I'm happy. I just don't understand how, no matter how incompetent the Democratic leadership could be, a lot of these states still pan out and vote for them, like Hawaii for instance. Even after what happened with the wildfires that destroyed people's homes and livelihoods, wouldn't most people think, you know what, I'm kind of sick of this corruption, why don't I vote these people out? I guess you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make him drink it. Bottom line, I like what I'm seeing here, and I think Trump's odds are looking better and better by the day, but that does not mean we take our foot off the gas. We have to go full steam ahead. There's about a week left until we determine who is the next president of the United States. So if you are a Trump voter or you're sick of the oppressive government that we have right now, you got to get out there and vote. I don't care how much of a lead Trump has. We need every single person coming out and voting in unison. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this down below. And 
now I got a question. Are any of you guys registered Democrats who are voting for Donald Trump come this election? How many of you guys are out there? I'd love to hear that. And is anyone a registered Republican who is voting Democrat? Let me know. I'd love to hear all this. And if you enjoyed, make sure to smash that like, comment, subscribe, and wish you guys nothing but the best. Till next time.